Ridiculous girl, look at that! All the pictures I gave you. I thought I was just being kind, but I was saving the world. Bill, if there's any of you left in there, listen. <laughs> you have to keep thinking about your mum, the memory you created. Her voice, her smile, the monks can't get near it. <sighs> Fill your mind with it. Push it into every corner. <sighs> He's filling his mind with one pure, uncorrupted, irresistible image. And it's broadcasting it to the world because it can't help it. All those years you kept her alive inside you. An isolated subroutine in a living mind. Perfect. Untouchable. She's a window on the world without the monks. Absolutely loved. Absolutely trusted. That window is opening everywhere. A glimpse of freedom. But a glimpse is all you need. The lie is breaking. Bill's mum, you just went viral. Hello, I'm Jason Mohammed, and I'm speaking to you live from BBC Hoddenot Hall in Cardiff. I'm here with some very lucky Doctor Who fans who've been watching a very special screening of World Enough and Time, the penultimate episode of the current series of Doctor Who. Well, who saw that coming? I think we've just about recovered from that wonderful episode here. Amazing stuff. Behind me, we have the BBC National Orchestra of Wales, affectionately known as the Doctor Who House Band. They featured on every episode since Christmas 2005 and that memorable Christmas episode, The Christmas Invasion. If you've just joined us via the BBC One Facebook page, a very warm welcome to you. You will have just heard them playing A Good Man featuring Murray Gold's thrilling theme for the 12th Doctor conducted by Alistair King. In that sequence, we witness the Doctor and his current companion, Bill Potts, defeat the monks in The Lie of the Land, episode eight, of course, of this series. And I'm delighted to say that the wonderful Pearl Mackey, who's been such a huge hit in the role of Bill, is here, live in Cardiff, and joins me now. Pearl, a very good evening to you. Very nice to see you. Very nice, nice to see you. See you. Too. And I tell you something, what an immersive experience these lucky fans have had this evening. I know. Not it was only incredible. watching the episode, but with the National Orchestra of Wales. It was amazing, wasn't it? I mean, you guys are absolutely fantastic. I think, can we have a round of applause again for the orchestra? <laughs> so, like, it's phenomenal. So good. Thank you. Well done. And all other wonderful plaudits. It, it is was, incredible, When they played the it? Doctor Who theme tune, I was like, I know. <laughs> it is, it's spine tingling, isn't it, it's when you hear it? Yeah. I didn't really think about that when I thought that they were, you know, obviously playing, you know, scoring the whole episode. I didn't think they were going to play the theme tune. Yeah. I was just like, ah! Well, look, it's very well, nice to see you. And in the many question and answer sessions I've done for Doctor Who since being part of it in 2005, I've asked this question What happens next? Well, and no should, one's answered me. You should me. know the answer then. <laughs> I can't tell you that, can I? <laughs> but this episode has been absolutely captivating. I've seen, I was just sitting in the second row there, I saw people jump, I saw people laugh, and I saw people hide their eyes as well. Oh, good. Well, that's what we want, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's so nice watching it with a live audience because, I mean, it's usually just me watching it on, on my TV at home, my sofa, <laughs> quite lonely. <laughs> but, no, it's really nice to watch it with, you know, with other people that... Because obviously I know what's going to happen. Yeah. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't ever actually seen all the episodes before they come out. I quite like not to do that. But um, 
it's really nice to sort of see other people's reactions to it and see if, you know, if, if those bits are scary and if those bits are funny and, you know, so, uh, yeah, it's nice. When the programmes go out, presumably you've seen them in the edit or you've seen them before. Well, no, no, I, I, I mean, don't I see, see, I see a bit of rushes sort of here and there, yeah, but... Right, um, yeah. I, I quite I quite like not seeing it. Mm. I mean, I see a bit in ADR, which is sort of additional dialogue recording, which we uh, which we do. You know, someone's like walking over your line or something like that. You have to record it again uh, in little booth. Um, uh, so yeah, you see a bit of it in that, mm. but you don't get the full effect because it's not. You know, you don't get all the special effects and all of that kind of stuff. So what about on a Saturday evening when the rest of us are curled up on the sofa? Do you sit at home watching it? I do, yeah, yeah, mostly. Do you monitor social media as well to see what they're saying about you? No, 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 no. no I must no. stop doing I that. I can't handle that until <laughs> maybe like two days later, then I'll sort of look back and be like, oh, did they like it? Yeah. <laughs> and can I ask you as well, Paul? I mean, again, another question I've used many, many times. What's it been like being part of this incredible program? It's been pretty incredible, to be honest. That's a very good word to use. Um, it's, it's such a roller coaster. It's such a, a phenomenal show, and it's got such an amazing fan base that's been that are so dedicated to it. It's, it's, it's such an amazing thing to be part of. It's still kind of, I mean, I, I know I've sort of said sort of throughout many interviews that I've done that it, it's never really felt very real because it's so, it's such a surreal experience, and it's so kind of hard to believe that this is actually me sitting here in front of lots of people who just watched the last episode, <laughs> you know, penultimate episode of the series of uh, Doctor Who that I've just filmed. Um, it's yeah, I, I find it very. I'm finding it very surreal, but in a very good way. I just feel like I'm probably going to wake up soon and be like, "Oh, that was nice." <laughs> <laughs> it takes a while to sink in. One would yeah, imagine. Yeah, it totally does. Can we talk about John great. Sim because he frightened the life out of us? Oh yeah. On this big screen here today, is he as scary as he is the master? No, he's a puppy. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. No, he was lovely. He was so great to to work with. Um, I was a massive fan of um, Life on Mars and watched that, and when I heard that John was, was coming back, I was so excited. And then he came back in, like, prosthetics, and I was like, who's that? He <laughs> <laughs> was like, who's that? And I was like, oh, it's John. He's like, it's me. Hi. <laughs> but no, he's lovely, and he's such a brilliant actor. It was so fun to, to sort of work with him, because we had, we had, obviously, you know, quite a lot of scenes together, so it was lovely, yeah. It was really, yeah. really friendly. Uh, the other amazing thing as well is we're watching it here in this magnificent hall as well, on a big screen, and you have to say, it doesn't look out of place. Yes, this is a TV program, but it does not look out of place on the big screen. And that is something you must be very, very proud of. This could easily be in a movie theater and people could enjoy it as a cinema piece, couldn't they? Let's face it. Well, I mean, yeah, it's, it's really nice to see that. I mean, it looks phenomenal. You know, the, everyone, every, all the crew and every, all the production and, and everyone works so you hard You have got an it. amazing team, haven't you? Yeah, oh, fantastic. Some of them are here today, actually. Yeah. Hiya. Yeah, but everyone, it's not, it's not just the production team, but it's, but it's everything about it, you know. I mean, the, B, the BBC is known for high-class programming, but, you know, it's just so slick and it's so... The production values are so high, it's just absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's, it's such a phenomenal program to be part of. It's so, it's so nice to see it sort of, you know, in, in that form as well. When else do you sort of get to see your own face scored by a 90-piece orchestra? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of the great things about Doctor Who since it returned to our screens back in 2005 is the thrilling soundtrack by Murray Gold. It's performed by the orchestra behind us, the amazing BBC National Orchestra of Wales, recorded here in this very studio, BBC Hoddenot Hall in Cardiff and Pearl we heard them play a good man at the start of the show oh, what's yeah. it been like to have this fantastic music to go along with the show too? it's amazing it's so it's so like rousing I mm. think in, in a good way and then as sort of all the best scores are you kind of don't notice it when it's just really subtle which is kind of it's making you feel things that you kind of don't even know it's doing you're not even, and you know, there's, there's parts of that when you're sort of, you know, I was looking out watching the screen and I was like, you kind of don't even realise that the music's happening and then Very you're like, true. oh God, and then it really comes in yeah, again. And it's, yeah. that's, that's, I think, that's the power of a good score. I think yeah. that's, that's what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to make you, it takes you on a journey and it kind of, yeah, it, it enables you to feel things that you're not aware that you're feeling. Mm. Do you do requests? Well, maybe just for one. Okay, okay. Just because, for me. Uh, yeah, because as soon as we've got the orchestra here, do you have any special requests? Anything you'd like us I'm to play a bit, tonight? A bit biased, but um, I quite like um, Bill's theme. <laughs> <laughs> well, as it happens, Murray and the team have worked on a very special arrangement of Bill's theme just for this event. We're going to hear it right now as we look back with Pearl at some of Bill's best moments from her time in the TARDIS.
Wonderful. That was Murray Gold's beautiful and enchanting Bill's theme, written for the Doctor's current companion, Bill Potts, played by the wonderful Bill Mackey. There was a lot of my face in me. that, wasn't there? <laughs> it was very good. Uh, Bill's with me for this very special event here in Cardiff to mark the beginning of the end of the 12th Doctor. Just one episode left of the current series, and then at Christmas we say goodbye to Peter as the Doctor. If you've just joined us on the BBC One Facebook page, a very good evening to you. We're live in Cardiff, the home of Doctor Who, since it returned to our screens in 2005. We now want to introduce our next very special guest, someone who wrote two scripts for that first series, Who Can Forget the Empty Child and The Doctor Dances. He's delivered many brilliant scripts since then. He's been the showrunner since 2010. After seven years at the helm, he's now delivered his final script, this year's Christmas special, which is currently being filmed right here in Cardiff Bay. Please give a very big welcome to the genius behind Doctor's Adventures, Mr. Stephen Moffat. They are quite high stools, aren't they? You just yeah, that was challenging. <laughs> yes. Squeeze in gently. Hello, yeah. Stephen. Good evening to you. Very nice to see you. And you. And you. Very nice to see you. I think the crowd thoroughly enjoyed it. Did you hear the reaction? Did you uh, yes, see I, some I of the jumps? Yes, I was sitting among them. Uh, uh, one or two people turned their heads just tinily away from the screen. I've listed them. <laughs> and we'll be talking to them later. Yeah, no, it was great. That was lovely. What, what a lovely crowd. Is that it for with. pool? Hmm? Is that yeah, it that's cool? it. She's, well, she's a Cyberman from now on. Yeah, I'm yeah. going home now, actually. Yeah. <laughs> she's one of those ones in the trailer. She was just killing people. That's, that's the way it is no, sometimes. Uh, also, Stephen, I know, again, I'll try once again. I know you can't tell us much about the, ne the next episode, but what can you tell us? It's on on Saturday. Thank you very much. Um, very good. <laughs> He's done this to me before on stage at the World's Millennium Centre. I remember it well. Um, are you now going to explain to those people streaming this on Facebook how the master returned? What's the thinking? Uh, how how yeah. how we got John oh, Sim back yeah. as the yeah. master? Yeah. Well, he always wanted to come back. Did he? Um, he was lying. I'm just I'm just grassing him up everywhere. Do you remember <laughs> at the end of time screening, which was his uh, previous appearance? Yeah. At the end of time screening, he was on the panel with uh, uh, with David Tennant and and the rest of them. I'm sorry, John. This is evil of me. <laughs> and he said of the panel, I, "Well, you know, I feel with David leaving, it's my time as the master is also over." Then he sought me out afterwards and said, I was lying. I'm absolutely fine to come back. And I just, just, no, it just phoned me. But, you know, obviously we got to the point where we had Michelle came in as the master, as the, as the female version of the master, uh, which worked so amazingly well. And from that point on, I knew I wanted at some point them to meet. Because, you know, I mean, just look at the poster. It just yeah. works. Yeah. And it really you works know. when you watch it as well, doesn't and it? And somehow, I mean, as a, as a test flight, in terms of, you know, changing, frankly, the gender of a, of a character is a radical thing to do in a popular show. And everybody completely buys in a completely barking mad way that somehow Michelle Gomez and John Sim are playing the same part. I, I, I love that. It's my favourite thing. I read in the, in the souvenir programme that our lucky fans here have managed to get hold of, there's an article in there with you, and there's a quote there which says, you didn't want to leave it all nostalgic. Was that a, a temptation? You didn't want to revisit some of the older lines and older characters? Uh, I'm so lacking in nostalgia, I can't actually remember what I said in the brochure because I haven't read it yet. Um, I didn't, well, no, there's no, there's no, uh, looking back. You didn't want way, it to be a nostalgia fest? Uh, when, when, uh, leaving? No, no, you mm. want a brand new, exciting adventure pushing forward mm. to the future of Doctor Who, which I want to be incredibly secure and exciting because I have my place reserved behind the sofa to start watching it properly again. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, we, I mean, you know, nobody, nobody genuinely, properly, nobody cares about behind the scenes people leaving. It's tragic. I weep every night Are about the sure fact. about that? Yes, I am absolutely yeah. certain of it. Okay. How do we uh, feel about it? Yeah, they don't care, honestly, <laughs> genuinely. Look, <laughs> I have never heard Is indifference. Is laughing his head off? Is an indifference expressed so completely. <laughs> uh, that some of them are actually saying, why is that man sitting next to Pearl? <laughs> 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 Why is he come on? He sometimes who is turns he? up. <laughs> Look, is that real hair? <laughs> now, I want to introduce Crystal D, who many of you will know as Wait. the presenter of Doctor Who, the fan show on YouTube. Hello, Crystal. A very good evening to you. What a great episode, eh, Crystal? Amazing. I have one word to describe how I'm feeling right now. Shook. 
Shook. And you've got some questions that you've had in from our wonderful viewers. I do. So many amazing questions. Uh, the first one is from Facebook. Uh, Melissa Newell asks, Pearl, how has working on Doctor Who changed your approach to acting? Oh, that's, a, that's quite an interesting question. Firstly, Christel, I love your jacket. It's sick. Oh, thank you so Sorry much. That. Oh, thank you. Um, I, well, essentially, it was my first kind of job on camera. So it, it's, it's changed my approach altogether in terms of I didn't really know what I was doing before and now I still don't really know what I'm doing but I'm better at blagging it so um, yeah I mean essentially that that it was a massive sort of introduction to me uh, to yeah working on working on camera by the end of my first day I'd had more hours on the set than I'd ever had before in my entire life in the entirety of my career so um, that was yeah that, that's essentially how it's changed it I've learned how to work with a camera this close to your face sometimes and sometimes really far away but actually they're still quite close on you and you don't know because you don't know what size the lens that they're on <laughs> so you know it's, it's very confusing <laughs> you've been so amazing oh uh, we've also got uh, another question from facebook uh, kia quinn asks or oh, says you're amazing pearl what's your favorite Thanks. thing about the show oh god everything how could i don't know uh being in it <laughs> um, I, I don't know. What's, how, do you, how do you pinpoint your favourite? I'm very bad at my favourite thing about anything. I'm very indecisive. I like everything about it. Um, I, like, I love Peter as, as Doctor Who. I think he's fantastic. Um, I love working with every, all the guest cast that we have. I love all the directors that come in. I love all, everyone. I love the crew. I love the TARDIS that's actually quite tiny on the inside. Uh, <laughs> 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 That's not true. It's massive. Um, uh, yeah, everything about it, it's, it's been, it's, it's fantastic. I love it. Any oh. more questions, Crystal? Uh, that's it for now, uh, Jason. Okay. Over, to, over to you. Bless you. Thank you very much indeed. We'll be taking more questions from Crystal D later. So just two episodes to go for Peter as the Doctor. Next Saturday series finale and then Christmas. How would you sum up Peter's Doctor, Stephen, when you look back? Oh, I think, uh, I think he's, as he's developed, he's like a, uh, there's a wonderful contradiction between uh, he plays a doctor who thinks he's aloof and mysterious and remote, and actually he's a, a, an exposed nerve of raw emotion all the time. Because, you know, the, the thing about, I think, Peter as an actor is that he only has to think at the screen and you know what he's thinking. Sometimes you think he's not, he's not even moving his face and I know exactly the particular blend of Scottish torment he's feeling right now. <laughs> I think he's, uh, I think that just, he is, he is, he, I think despite trying to fight it, playing a doctor is fighting his own emotions, he has given us the most emotional doctor. Absolutely. Well, as a tribute to Peter's time as the doctor, we've put together a very special sequence from the current series. The music we've used is Breaking the Wall, written by Murray Gold for Stephen's iconic series nine episode, Heaven Sent. <laughs>
Wonderful. The amazing BBC National Orchestra of Wales leader Leslie Hatfield and conducted by Alistair King in that performance of Murray Gold's Breaking the Wall from Heaven Sent. Right, Crystal, I think we've got some more questions from Facebook and also from our lovely audience here in Cardiff. We have got a question from the audience. I'm joined here by Mohammed, who has a really good question. Mohammed, what's your question? Oh, I'm alive. Hello. Um, f well, Hello. first of all, I just want to say, uh, Pearl and Stephen, what a phenomenal uh, series you've done for us. So thank you very much for, for everything. Uh, my question is, um, well, it's sort of directed to both of you. Uh, was it emotional for you, Pearl, to film uh, the death of your character in, in uh, these last episodes? And Stephen, has it been emotional right in your last episodes for this amazing series? I mean, I'm quite an emotional person, so uh, it was uh, it was pretty it was pretty emotional. I mean, even just reading uh, any of it and at the read through, it was all quite emotional because there's a lot of sort of endings. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I think that's the sort of you know credit to Stephen's amazing writing that you can get the kind of emotion from it when you read it that you're supposed to get when you when you watch it. Um, so yeah. I mean, it's it's a, a hugely emotional show, oddly enough, which I think is unusual for a science fiction show. It's massively emotional. And yes, yes, if you don't laugh when you write it, you can't expect anyone else to laugh. If you don't cry when you write it, you can't expect anyone else uh, uh, to cry. So, yes, uh, you, you do have... Uh, of course you go through all those emotions. You look like an absolute idiot if you're writing it. When I, when I get to the end sequence of a, of a Doctor Who sequence, uh, episode, uh, when it's all getting very exciting, I have to stand up to write it because it's just too exciting to write <laughs> sitting down. Uh, so I, I throw the chair back. How, how alarmingly exciting. And, uh, and I type standing up because it's all got so frantic. But yes, it, it is massively emotional. And then it's the job of getting that emotion um, onto the screen. And that just brings me to someone I really want to mention because uh, she is also here, which is uh, who's, uh, Rachel Tallerley, who directed tonight's episode, is, uh, is sitting there. <laughs> Um, Go on, stand up. Yes. Yeah. I think possibly the only director who's ever worked with me more than three times. So, uh, <laughs> there you go. I mean, read what you want into that. She's an amnesiac. <laughs> <laughs> A very good question, Mohammed. Thank you. And, Crystal, just what's been the overwhelming reaction from our audience tonight in Cardiff? Just incredible. I think it's been so amazing to see uh, everyone's reactions in real time uh, to this episode. There's so many reveals and exciting moments, and it's only going to get better. Wonderful stuff. Thank you very much indeed. And Stephen, my 11-year-old Doctor Who fan son wouldn't forgive me for not mentioning live on the BBC One Facebook page about you getting a dab. You got a dab. Yeah, I don't you, really you, know what you, that is. Whose idea I mean, was that to get a dab? Do you know how cool? That was Michelle. Was that Michelle's idea? Yeah. Do you know how cool that yeah, is? Yeah, that's fine. No, listen, I, 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 I believe it's cool. Yours. I don't know, Do you know what how it cool? is. It was Rachel. We got any young fans in here? It was Rachel. Here? Oh, there Rachel, you go. well done. You got Sorry. a dab. It was Rachel. I mean, you know, you everyone's claiming the credit. My younger dab... son also claimed the credit. <laughs> I mean, everyone mine. is claiming yeah, the credit. Mine. I'm not even at you. What's so good about that? Anyway. Well, I tell you what. Uh, well, 10, 11, 12, 13-year-olds are doing it or up and down the country. And anyway, can I just ask you one final question, Pearl, about you, uh, future for you, Stephen, in just a moment. But... Has it changed your life unbelievably? Because when we've done these Q&As in previous times in Doctor Who, we've talked about how you literally cannot walk into Tesco any longer without someone saying, hey, how are you? I've noticed you from the TV. Yeah. Yeah, basically, you've completely summed it up. It has entirely changed my life. Um, I've just seen my face scored by a 90-piece orchestra. That's pretty mad. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah but it's, I mean, it's, it's been... It's, it's amazing. I, I was in America recently, and people were recognising me there. And that's, that was completely mad. Yeah. Um, so I have to wear more makeup <laughs> than I did before. Um, no, it's, it's great. It's lovely. And every, it's been very, you know, sort of overwhelmingly positive response. No one throws oranges at me good. in the supermarkets good. That's yet. Good. And, so and Stephen, that's good. And Stephen, you say that not many people are interested in you, but 
this person is interested in you. What's next for you? What are you going to do? Um, I'm going to go on holiday. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Uh, well, well, you can't got, do that forever. Uh, no, yeah, I, can't. I could give it a damn try. <laughs> Professionally, um, what's next for you, Steve? Um, well, I, I, obviously with Mark, I'm going to be doing Dracula, but that's not immediately. Um, I've got other plans just before that, mostly involving a balcony and gin and tonic. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I've got... I, I, I really, I, I'm still working on this. Mm. Once, the, once the head's clear, there's a few things I'd like to do, a few ideas I'd like to do, that are as far away from Doctor Who and uh, from really? Sherlock as I can manage. Not that I don't love those things more than anything, mm. because I do, but uh, in the case of Doctor Who, Doctor Who's entirely Are these things in me. television or are they in movies? You know, restauranting, I'm going to become a waiter. <laughs> um, I, I think, I, I'd You'd be great be so at good. that. I'm a, I've got a bad memory and I'm rude. You've got you good know. gags. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Right, we're not going to get anything out of you, are we, about your future plans, apart from a gin and tonic and a balcony? Uh, gin and tonic, but, but Dracula, come on, that's something. Yeah, I know yeah. we announced it the other day, yeah, yeah but, you yeah. know. It's... Good man. Dracula solves crimes. I just made that up. It's not, it's not, it's not Dracula's. That's there, quite good, though, isn't it? There, there is one final right, Dracula thing. Dracula solves crimes yeah. worse yeah. for me. Yeah. 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 Hold the back page. There is one thing I'd like to say as well about the music as well. And do you want to pay tribute to the orchestra and also to Murray as well? Because without this unbelievable score and the music, then Doctor Who, you know, really is a TV programme that is complemented so well by this. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, uh, we, we were just standing backstage and all the musicians kept walking past and I kept wanting to shake all their hands and be sort of creepy and strange. Um, <laughs> because, uh, you know, every single person in that orchestra is much cleverer than me. Because how do they do that? How do they do that? No idea. I was talking, I was talking to the conductor just there and saying, well, how do you do all that? Just turn up and do that. He said, oh, we rehearsed this afternoon. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> yeah, do we practice earlier? I don't, I honestly don't know how you guys do that. That's that's not normal, that's not human. That's absolutely amazing. And genuinely, I'm not just saying it, I was saying it the prayer earlier, it just takes my breath away what you guys do. It we is are very beautiful proud of and them. extraordinary. We are very proud of you. Thank you very much. Brilliant. Magnificent. Well, Stephen, can I say it's always a pleasure. It is always a pleasure being invited by the Doctor Who crew to come and host these Q&As, and, and God bless you. And I've thoroughly enjoyed every minute of it when we've done these Q&As, so we will miss you. But thank you very much indeed. And Pearl, lovely to meet you, and thank you very and much you. indeed. Really good stuff. And thank you, audience, for coming this evening. It's been a wonderful evening. All that remains is for me to remind all of you to tune in to BBC One next Saturday, 6.45. 6.45? Correct? Yeah, yeah. Uh, is it? Somebody just shout out the, uh, the, the time of the next Doctor Who episode very quickly. <laughs> what? 6.45. We were right, um, we were right. Yeah. 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 I always check the Radio Times myself. Yes, a very absolutely. popular yeah. uh, listings magazine. Yeah. I'm sorry, no. Are we haven't, yeah. Okay, do you know what? I, I've got an excuse. And it's a really cool excuse. Talk about a cliffhanger. We haven't actually finished episode 12 yet. Oh, really? <laughs> Seriously, really? I've, we haven't seen the finished version. So I've got things to this worry about before this we exclusive. worry about when we put it out. So it could be Sunday, yeah. it could be the following <laughs> Thursday, I don't know. So well, it's not done. OK, well, we hope. BBC One, we hope BBC One, 6.45 for The Doctor Falls. In the meantime, we'll leave you with the BBC National Orchestra of Wales, conducted by Alistair King with Murray Gold's arrangement of the greatest theme tune in all of space and time. Thank you very much indeed for watching. Bye for now.
don't forget to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel.